Welcome back to the 90% Podcast. This is episode three. I'm your host, Tyler Matthews, and I'm joined today by my man, Earl Simmons Jr. How you doing today, Earl? Hey, man, I'm doing great, man. Always, always can't complain. Here we go. I'm excited yeah. to get through this podcast. This is going to be fun conversation. Um, what I want to say real quick is thank you to all of the listeners that have given us feedback. It's been great to hear your guys' thoughts on our thoughts and just what you guys want to hear moving forward. I think today will be a really interesting episode. We're going to talk about how players can take their game to the next level. So a lot of players come to us or we hear from them, Instagram DMs or emails, whatever it may be, that they're not at the level that they want to be at, whether that's with their shooting, their ball handling, their footwork, their finishing, their overall game, their confidence. Um, maybe it's with their parents. So today we're going to talk about how they can boost their game and how they can take their game to the next level as well as give parents tips on how to support your kids in taking their game to the next level mm -hmm. sound like a game plan Earl? oh yeah, yeah sweet so again before we start i just wanted to thank you guys who have already tuned in and if you're not currently subscribed to our youtube channel please subscribe to our youtube channel as that'll help us be able to help more people and get this information out to them so Without further ado, here we go. Earl, before we get started into the main topic of taking players' games to the next level, I want to hear your background as a basketball enthusiast. How did you get started in the game of basketball? And then we'll transition into how you became a coach slash trainer. So where did the ball start bouncing for you? Um, I would say at about age five or six age five or six age Sweet. five or six and um, were you immediately in love with the game no it took a while I, I did it for fun um it wasn't until my sixth seventh grade year really seventh grade year having to make a team um and that really kind of triggered me because I got cut you know, uh oh first, oh yeah the first cut I, I didn't even make it to the that'll second teach cut, you, you that know? same so, here same here I got cut yeah. my freshman year actually yeah you know, what's crazy, though, is I actually, after getting cut, you know, I, I remember going home and crying about it. I, I Boo-hoo crying. But um, I ended up getting another shot because, you know, the coaches saw that I had some type of skill. I just was really nervous that day. I was really nervous. I was shooting the ball side of the backboard, not making wide open layups. I was just really nervous. Um, and once they gave me that, extra, that next tryout, which never happens, I ended up making the team. Nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, that's rare right <laughs> yeah, there. But no. you did it. Yeah. That's what's yeah. up. Um, and so what you just said, uh, I don't want to call it anxiety, but you said you were nervous, right? I, I mean, we probably maybe maybe it was, it was anxiety. anxiety. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's a topic that I want to get to on today's podcast okay. because I think a lot of players, you see it, we, we mm -hmm. see players all the time that have the physical skills. They're just not putting it together with the mind yeah. right yeah. and again the podcast name is 90 percent because the game is 90 percent mental mm -hmm. right yeah. and so i think understanding that you're not alone in that and that almost every kid at the tryout probably had some sort of nerves yeah. or anxiety some people can just channel it more towards excitement and good gameplay mm -hmm. and then other people it ends up hurting you more yeah. than more than helping you right and so We'll talk about that a little bit. And so you got cut, then you went back, you ended up making the team, mm -hmm. and that was your sixth or seventh grade year? Seventh grade year, seventh grade year, yeah. So um, after, you know, making the team, uh, you know, in middle school, they did the first and third, second and fourth, fourth deal. I remember playing first and third. I sat on the bench behind a guy that was starting in front of me. And it was maybe the third game, uh, not maybe, it was, definitely the third game of the season because i can never forget it um where i got my shot i got my shot and I, I performed i did well on the court and i never not started a game after that you know in your whole career when my whole career as far as playing from middle school to high school at least um i never not started a game so i thought that was uh huge you know for me to be able to get over that that anxiety uh, make the team after the third game, kind of be that starter at the two guard. It really boosted my confidence up a lot. Oh yeah, no. Yeah. Sometimes that's all it takes is just yeah. one little, one little uh, boost or yeah. or just something to unlock 
limiting beliefs, right? Yeah. Maybe the, the ability was always there. You just didn't believe it until yeah. until you see it. Once you see it, now, now all the belief is unlocked and you can just go from there. Mm -hmm. So then you played middle school, played high school locally here in Melbourne? I did. I did play high school locally. Um, a big part of that, though, before getting into high school, a big part of me in middle school being able to develop, though, was... I did go to some basketball camps. Um, Got it. In between my seventh grade year, so I, I knew after my seventh grade year, I didn't want to be the same player I was. So I went to University of Miami basketball camp, a week long camp. Ooh, and was Jim Laranega there at the time or was it a different coach? Oh man, I can't even remember the coach's name. I'll actually have to look that information up, but um, it definitely was a ton of coaches there, a ton of college coaches there. All of them were committed to division and it was like boot camp. They had coaches standing literally in a drill at the beginning of the drill, in the middle of the drill, at the end of the drill. So it was like you couldn't do anything wrong. Uh -huh. So it was like that that level was heightened. I had to really kind of go get it there and play. I was seventh grader, but you know I was able to play with high school kids at that time because they moved me up to that level, that division. And man, it really helped out so much. It, it was, it was nerve wracking, but just being able to perform and being able to demonstrate that I was able to follow those instructions the coaches gave me. I was able to do all the, the little things. I think that. Really oh, yeah. No, and getting that. yourself in that environment yeah. of a college coach and just their presence and oh, the yeah. way they run things probably prepared you for high school we watched, major. Yeah. Not to cut you off, but we watch film. Oh, we yeah. Watch film. That was my first time ever knowing anything like we can watch us on us play like what, what is this you I, know i i'll be honest i don't think i understood how to watch film until i became a trainer yeah. you know what i mean like when i was, so i think players that get that benefit and are taking advantage of that there's thousands of videos on youtube so any players that are on youtube just actually looking at film study of nba players or college players or doing what you did going to a camp and having a college coach break down film mm -hmm is just next level because yeah. most basketball players i think or at least myself let me not speak for everybody but when i was growing up and i was watching the game i would just look at the ball i think mm -hmm. i don't even know what i was watching i think yeah. i was just watching humans run back and forth on yeah, a yeah. hardwood surface and i didn't really understand what to look for but when you understand how to look for how is this player getting open how are they shooting the ball every time they mm -hmm. catch it right how are they creating closeouts and then blowing past people yeah. what kind of cut is that what kind of screen is that what is this person doing defensively to get this stop and you start keying in on specific movements and characteristics and players and team movements then your your mind just expands and you yeah. start to understand basketball at, an, at another level that maybe you didn't think was possible before oh yeah definitely i agree i agree yeah and so keep going you you played high school or you went to that camp then you played high school did you play at melbourne high or yeah i played at melbourne high school four years there i played freshman my ninth grade year and it's crazy because during the time i remember in the summer they had a lot of like open runs you know all the varsity players came you know kind of the beat up on the younger generation coming up <laughs> I remember, you know, starting off playing with the ninth grade group and ninth grade and 10th graders. And it was just, you know, myself and a couple other players that was just like a little bit more advanced. And they were like, all right, we seen you play two or three games with them and dominate. Well, let's see what you do against the varsity players. And they had some solid players during the time. So um, I remember myself and a couple other guys, we kind of went over there and show varsity players like, hey, we belong here too. Oh yeah. You know, we belong here too. And it was it was great because we got kudos for some of those varsity guys. Some guys that went on to play college ball gave us some kudos. Like, man, you man, you guys can play. You guys can play varsity your ninth grade. Oh, yeah, which I'm sure is another boost in confidence, yeah. right? Realizing you can play with the highest level as far as under anything under college. Yeah, exactly. So playing ninth grade year as a freshman, uh, sophomore, I played uh, little JV and then moved up to varsity and – I was on varsity from that point on. Sweet. Yeah. And then played college basketball? College, oh, man, college was a different story. But, yeah, I did. I went to um, Florida State College in Jacksonville, um, JUCO, JUCO College. Um, and really, you know, when I was in high school, I didn't – I was so much into actually playing the game and being engulfed in it. I kind of wasn't thinking about college a lot. 
too much early on. I was just so engulfed in the game and just playing and just being in the moment. Then by the time my senior year came, it was like, dang, everything's right here now. Everything <laughs> time right flies. Here. I haven't oh, yeah. really thought about like, oh, what school I want to go to. So I, my notion to everyone else, you know, you, you good in, in the sport, you good, you, you got what it is you want to do. Try to figure that stuff out a little earlier. Maybe I should have had my parents, you know, invest a little bit more time and, you know, seek out to some of these colleges or even, you know, whatever, whatever they were able to do to kind of get me into that atmosphere, keep me in that atmosphere more. I think uh, that also would have helped my, my, my chances of going probably to some other schools. Um, but I, I, I went to Florida State College in Jacksonville. I was there for a year. Um, I was not able to play on the court. And this where uh, I want to kind of delve into this, if you don't mind. And Do your thing. We're is, here to hear. Listen. I think this is so important for players in general is to when you get to that point where you go to college, you have to understand that you are a teenager still, but you are around adults. You're around 20 year olds, 30 year olds, 40 year olds, <laughs> you know, so you're around people that are still figuring it out, but some of them have it figured out. And just being in that atmosphere is completely different than high school, uh, where you you go from being the youngest on campus to the oldest and back to the youngest again. So, you know, the fear and anxiety started to come back. You, you get what I'm saying? So yeah. um, just being engulfed in that and seeing the difference. Um, so I was not able to get on the court because of some things that I didn't handle as a student. And I think that is so important. So, I, and I've told this story to some kids that I've trained before just to kind of keep it transparent with them. Like, hey, I know you guys look at us as trainers and, and, and college players and you think that we haven't made mistakes, we haven't um, failed, failed the class or we haven't um, made some poor decisions. Um, those things happen as life. Uh, but I believe that inside of that is when you start to find yourself. So I think for me, when I didn't play, when I wasn't able to get on court because some things I didn't handle in school, um, you got to be at eight o'clock classes. It's mandatory. Oh, yeah. You know, you got to be there at 730. Get there early. You know, all those little things are so important what time you go to bed, what time you wake up in the morning, a routine. And I can tell you as a high school student, I was a good player, solid player in the county, but this is a big world. And there's a lot of players, there's a lot of athletes, student athletes that, that play the game and you are competing with everyone. And that notion didn't hit me until I was in college. Like, dang, man, I came over here and I got a, a, kid, a guy on my team that's 6'10", 250 pounds. My center was just 6'4", <laughs> in high school. Like, man, this dude is chiseled. Uh -huh. You know, I have, I'm, I got into weights, but not like, so it was just the mental, the physical, everything kind of hit me all at once. And and um, I think it's a, it's a new level, it's right? A new it's, level. In, in high school, you're playing against your county here yeah. um, at that JUCO. They're recruiting kids from all over the country, and then you're playing other JUCOs all around Florida or, or the Southeast yeah. um, that have recruited kids. For, so instead of just competing against your local area, now you're competing against the, the nation or possibly the globe with how much people are recruiting from overseas now. Oh, right? yeah. So oh, yeah. the level of competition just is obviously rises as you, yeah. as you get up to college. So Yeah. Um, yeah, it, re it really does. It really does. And I, I, I think once... So, so after that point of, of not being able to play, I was at every practice, every game, um, supported the team, did all the other stuff, all the workouts, all the off-season stuff, um, uh, the beach workouts, you know, running six miles every other day on the beach. You know, that was something that was mandatory at our school, um, at, 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 at the college I went to. So doing all those things, just develop a work ethic in me. So regardless of me actually being on the court, I still was able to learn how to work. Oh yeah. How to still grow as not a, a, not just, you know, as a player, but off the court too. Yep. Like, no, no, that translates what, to life. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Work so ethic. If, if I'm not playing a game, I still got to get up and go to work. I still got to have a routine. I still got to, 
you know, work smart. You know, I know Absolutely. we did work hard, but work smart. So, yeah, it, it taught me a lot. So where you were at college, were you only there for a year total? I was there for a year total. And, and then at that point is when I had to make some... I like to call them some 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 grown up decisions. Uh -huh. I had to make some grown up decisions. Hey, am I going to push for my second season and and really get there? I'm 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 in the process where I'm about to move out of my apartment with my roommates and move by myself now. So it's like, uh, man, life and trying to play basketball was something at the time. It was tough for me to try to balance that. So I chose life over basketball, and I chose to work to get a job and to up in Jacksonville or back in Jacksonville, here in Brevard. Up gotcha. in Jacksonville, get a job. Work. I worked at a restaurant. I worked at PF Chains. Oh, at, nice. Uh, PF Chains and the Cheesecake Factory. You know, they took care of me for a while, but I was uh, that was one of my backgrounds in in, in um, middle school and high school. I, I worked in restaurants, so I, I went back to what I knew. Uh -huh. as a college student to make money and so on and so forth. And um, I realized that um, once I chose that path, at that point in time, I thought that was it for basketball. I thought that was it. Okay, this is what I'm doing. I'm working. I'm paying bills. This is my life. It wasn't until, and this is because someone I was dating at the time, they went to UNF. So I would be in the dorms, and they had outdoor courts there. Uh-huh. So I always had a ball still, and I got into going back on the court again. Just playing, playing pickup. Playing, playing by myself, and then others came, playing pickup, one-on-one, two-on-two, then there's a bunch of people yeah. there. So that got me back into falling in love with the game again. So, yeah. Sweet. Yeah. So I know we've been uh, partnered up here at Fast Feed on for the last six months, but then in between, let's say, you graduating or not – graduating but finishing your time in college mm -hmm. right starting to work at restaurants how did what was that period like from ending college and, and doing restaurants to now being a, a full-time trainer um helping basketball players on a daily basis um I, I believe it started really when I moved back here I, you were I, co you were coaching right I was coaching and you know I feel like I always had something inside of me because I was an individual that always went to outdoor courts and played by myself and anybody that sees me can jump in or any little kids I'll hey man do this with your foot you know do this with your shot you're not you know snapping your wrist back uh -huh. just, some just just giving me, little tips little here and there tips little tips here and there so it was always instilled in me but I didn't know that power at that time I didn't I didn't know I had that it was just one of those things and I, I think where it really clicked for me was when I started coaching. When I started coaching for uh, Melbourne, Melbourne Powell here. And I think that's one of the best leagues around. When you uh, say it clicked, what, you realized how valuable the it, skills that you have and being able to communicate and, and the skills that you acquired as a player, being able to transfer that to through the communication to yep. the youth. Yep, yep. I, I think that's when it all clicked for me. Like, I now know one of my reasons why I'm here on, on the planet. Oh, yeah, you purpose know? is huge. When you yeah. know your purpose, you, you're pulled in yeah. that direction, right? And, and some people figure that out when they're younger. Um, some people figure it out when they're later, when they're, when they're older. Um, I think I figured that out when I was about mm, 20, 21 years old. Uh -huh. About 21 years old is when I figured that out, starting coaching. I'm a young coach, and I got these kids that are looking at me wide-eyed, you know, their first – looking at me like, man, what are you going to teach us? Like that type of feeling. Oh, yeah. Is what I, what I, <laughs> I got love that. from the looks. And it was like, man, I'm supposed to teach them all of this. I'm supposed to teach them what I know. And I think what happened or what ended up happening along the path is I had to start seeking out for more knowledge of the game. It Absolutely. wasn't just all, everything I learned. I was able to teach them that stuff. But the game grows. The game changes every I don't know, five to seven years. It's always just like a new birth of, of, of most Absolutely. Sports, but yeah. And one thing me and you have talked about is as a player teaching other players, you usually teach what you're good at, right, mm -hmm. as a player. So if I'm good at catch and shoot or one dribble pull-ups, I'm going to teach that a lot, right? Yeah. As a trainer, not every player is going to be the same. And so if you trained every player based off what you were good at, not every player is going to succeed. Yeah. So as a trainer or coach, you 
need to be studying the game, like you said, and learn the broad aspects of basketball yeah. and be able to teach ball handling, shooting, finishing, footwork. And, and be able to teach two different players, right? Yeah. Not everybody's gonna respond the same way. Yeah. Some people like to hear you, right? Mm -hmm. They wanna hear it verbally. Other people wanna see it, right? Yeah. Other people wanna maybe see it, but instead of just uh, as the trainer demonstrating, they wanna see an NBA player using it, right? Yeah. So yeah. I think that's the difference of being able to give tips as a player and then transitioning to being a trainer, learning those principles yeah, and one thing it. i'd say that you're really good at is as a coach and trainer being able to do the things that maybe people don't think about are required like keeping kids engaged mm -hmm. right understanding mm -hmm. how to keep their attention for an entire hour and and make it fun while still coaching them yeah right yeah and so i think that's a skill within itself yeah 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 i i, I, I appreciate that and I, I think that is is highly important to do you know because a lot of these kids, they it, it, it when you're infectious with something with the youth, I think they become infectious with it. So oh, yeah. if I'm in the gym and you know it's quiet in the gym, it's gonna stay quiet. Yep. You know, but if it's loud, if it's music on, if it's an energy, if you're clapping it up, not to say that has to happen, you know, the entire workout, but you know, if you can have moments of that encouragement, I think it, it goes a long way. Oh yeah. Yeah. And so let's let's start getting into let's do it. our topic of how kids can take their game to the next level, mm -hmm. right? And and how they can understand how to take their game to the next level. So, what do you think? My opinion, as far as how a kid can take their game to the next level, we could get on this topic and probably talk for five hours, right? But we want to condense this down to what are maybe we'll go for like another ten minutes of mm -hmm. what are some things that kids can start doing today tomorrow right no matter what level they're at whether they're beginner or advanced college player and not only kids but what can parents do to help their kids right mm -hmm. and so we let's talk let's start with kids okay. and then we'll transition into what parents can do um because i think the kids are the main thing right yeah. i think sometimes we see parents have two kids and one kid is very good at basketball and the other one doesn't care about basketball. Mm -hmm. So you can't necessarily blame the parenting. Every kid is going to be there themselves. Yeah. So what, what, where do you think it starts for a kid looking to take their game to the next level? Where does it start? R number one is to always have a ball. I know it's so basic. I, I, I think when you're at a young age, I think when, when you are able to, how you're able to fall in love with the game is you have to be, with the object and so the object is the basketball so i think carrying that around with you if it's okay even if it's okay to take it to school um you make sure you ask your parents first <laughs> but um i think just having a ball with you i think that's the the initial falling in love with the game is just having that object with you dribbling down the street um laying in your bed you know working on your form and your shot um Man, there's so much you can do with it. I don't care if you even back and forth with the ball, doing some little finger taps, just just getting familiar with the basketball is, I think, is the number one, number one. I, I think that's huge, yeah. honestly. Yeah. I wouldn't even thought have thought of that one. Mm -hmm. I think um, if you look at really anything that people become great at, they just become obsessed with it, right? Mm -hmm. The person that's mm -hmm. the best at the guitar always has their guitar with them, right? Yeah. You'll see them outside of the mall just playing their guitar, playing yeah. their guitar. Same thing with basketball, right? You got to have that ball with you. I like what you said, dribble down the street. That's working on skills, being fluid, walking, mm -hmm. and just and just dribbling the ball. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think to tie in with that, I think the second thing is once you you're constantly having that basketball with you is – then figure out how do I surround myself with players that are at the level that I want to be at. And maybe that's not the the end goal. So right now, if you're in elementary, middle, or high school, you're not necessarily going to have access to an NBA player, right? Mm -hmm. And you may want to be an NBA player. But if you're a middle school player, you do have access to a high school player, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's like grades. You can't jump from first grade and finish first grade and go to college, go, right? Yeah. You got to go first grade, second grade, third. and and by setting that foundation and doing really well in that grade, you set yourself up for success in the next grade, exactly, right? Yeah. So if, if you first find the best players that are your age, right? If you're in middle school, find the other best middle school players and figure out how do I get on a team with them? How do I play pickup with them? Then once you're doing great in that atmosphere, level up, right? Now, mm -hmm. how do I find a little bit older of players, right? Yeah. Maybe a little bit 
higher than I am. So if I'm in middle school, maybe find a ninth or 10th grader, mm -hmm. start playing with them, start watching them, literally yeah. just watching and observing, I think can teach you a lot, right? How do, how do they walk? How do they talk? How do they approach the game? Are they actually a good basketball player? Are they, are they finding success out here in the park and in their high school games? Or are they only able to find success in the park and then they freeze up in their high awesome. school games, right? Yeah. Do the skills translate? Because like we've talked about, certain skills don't translate, right? Mm -hmm. Like m maybe somebody can score one-on-one -on -one all day, but then as soon as there's a help side defender or somebody, somebody else reaching for the ball, now they're doomed, right? Yeah. And so I think what you said, having the ball with you at all times, then surround yourself with players at a little bit higher of a level or better players, players mm -hmm. that are doing the things that you want to do, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and I think to kind of go with, go off of that, piggyback a little bit, but I believe to add on to that, let me let me correct that, is you have to study the game. 100%. Like, you you have to go study the game. So, so it, it's to the point, and, and I hear this a lot, you know, I ask kids, and I, this is my favorite question to ask. Do you watch basketball? And <laughs> a lot of times I get no, and it hurts me. You know, it, you know, I, as pure as we are, you know, it hurts me. Like, oh man, you don't watch it. But we still have to be able to work with and train and develop those those kids. But we also have to teach them how to study the game. No, for sure. Um, and when you say study the game, I, lo I love that. Do you do you mean watch film or what exactly well, do you mean? Well, if, if I'm talking to the, the, the basic player, the beginning player, the one who's just getting in, still kind of trying to find their love for the game, just watching basketball. I, I, I don't think we talk about this part enough. Sometimes we talk about the NBA and, you know, that's the league everyone wants to get to. Of course, we, you got we it on your talk, shirt. We got to talk about <laughs> the NBA, you know, we got to talk about college basketball. You know, that's where every kid aspires to get to who falls in love with, with the game, play college basketball, some form of, of, of that level of basketball. But we don't talk about high school basketball enough. We don't talk about rec leagues enough. And I think it's kind of like it should be for kids similar to like an evaluation process of, of, of training a kid. I think the kid also has to evaluate what atmosphere they're going to be in by studying the game. Okay, let me go to, oh, mom, I'm thinking about playing for this pal. I want to, I heard my friends talking about it. Uh, can we go watch a game? Can we go and sit and watch a game? Oh, watch yeah. Watch two or three games? I, I, I love that. And, and, and I'm going to start pushing that notion a little bit more. I just kind of thought about that sitting here talking with you. But I think it, it can be some type of evaluation process between the kid, the parent, to where when they want to start studying the game to be able to find places. It's oh, yeah. gyms all over. You can 100%. find places on Saturdays. I am guarantee you there's a game going on somewhere, some gym from 9 to 8 o'clock at night. Oh, yeah. And you different know, levels of basketball. At different levels. Yep. And, and let your kids see from there from the beginning stage. If you are an older player, I say film is, is and you're older, a little bit more advanced, intermediate level, I think watching film is, is crucial. Um, you can watch your favorite players. I know that's something I did when I was young. Allen Iverson was like the guy, the it guy coming up. So to me, it was just like a model just to see how he dribbled the ball, just him being a, a, an elite player, a killer on the court that really I tried to mimic everything he did. Oh, yeah. yeah. I tried to mimic every the shoes. The, the no, we, we all did. I, for me, it was Dwayne Wade. I grew Dwayne. up in Miami. Okay. And I just loved Dwayne Wade and just everything he did. But I think that's what it is, is yeah. is keying in on something, right? Yeah. What Keen. you said is perfect. At first, just watch the game. Just watch basketball, yeah, right? Yeah, just watch it. A lot of really good basketball players started just by growing up in the gym mm -hmm. and just literally being a little kid, bouncing the ball, mm -hmm. and maybe their dad is playing in a pickup game or maybe he's in the NBA, so he's mm -hmm. kid bringing the kid to practice, whatever it is, but the kid is just around it, so he's just constantly watching, and it's subconsciously getting programmed into his brain. Yeah. Oh, they're passing the ball, they're jumping, they're dribbling, yeah. all this stuff. And um, as far as the film goes, I think what you said is perfect. Just pick a player, right? Mm -hmm. You can do that at times. Pick a player and just watch what they do. What, what moves are working for them, right? Mm -hmm. When are they exploding? Mm -hmm. How are they changing direction? And then we can get really deep. We'll have to oh, save yeah, that for another podcast yeah. of exactly how to watch film. But I think a lot of players don't understand that. Yeah. They, they're watching humans run back and forth on a, on a hardwood surface, mm -hmm. but they're not actually watching the game of – how are people cutting? How are they getting open? What's happening on defense? 
when this player does this, what does this player do? Different things like that. Yeah. So we'll save that for its own episode. But let's keep getting through this of mm -hmm. how players are taking their games to the next level. So we have always have a ball with you. Play and surround yourself with players that are taking it serious or at the level or better than what you want to be at. Yeah. You just touched on studying the game, right, which is mm -hmm. major. The thing that I love to tell players is daily vitamins, mm -hmm. right? So what are you – what – are you taking in every single day, right? You have obviously in life vitamins that you want to take, right? You got your vitamin A, vitamin B, vitamin D that you want to make sure you're getting um, substantial or efficient as much as you need yeah. to, to sustain yourself and be a healthy human, right? Yeah. Same thing with basketball. What should you be doing daily is what players need to ask themselves to maintain their game and to continue to grow their game and get better and better at basketball, right? Yeah. And so what do you think daily vitamins wise, what are some daily vitamins that players, just examples that players can take away and start set a, setting a list for themselves of daily vitamins? What are, what are some that you think that players can incorporate? Um, I think just some simplistic stuff, just getting your body used to what you're about to engulf in on the court. I, I, I believe push-ups are important. I believe sit-ups are important. Um, calf raises, um, all of those, all those, I, I say little things, but they become such a huge component to how your body functions and what moves you're trying to work on on the court. Like you could say you want to do a between the legs move, but maybe your body isn't equipped to get down as low as you need to actually perform that move. So you may have to do stretch, you may have to stretch more daily. Um, I know, you know, by the time I got to high school, you know, it became mandatory for us to take yoga and, and, and perform certain stretches. And it, it was very painful. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, I was in <laughs> high school. All of us were tight around the hips and the hammies and, and glutes and, you know, all that stuff. So. I think when you when you're able to stretch daily, um, that is really important. Um, I don't. I try not to get in the habit of just doing any style of stretch. Uh, I, I say, you know, it's it's so great with this generation because it's so much information out here. We can actually look information up. So I, I love pushing YouTube or Google to athletes and say, hey, look up some stretches that you can do. Focus on two or three stretches the entire week instead of trying to do 10 or 15 stretches. Focus on two or three that you can master or you can perform, you know, 95 to 90 to 95 percent efficient rate, efficiency rate as far as how you perform the stretch. I think once you're able to get to that point, um, it, it will help your game grow a lot. It will help you, you know, your body feel better. So we, we talk stretching, we talk uh, push-ups, jumping jacks. Uh, so uh, having having, ha yeah, having a, a routine the, for your body. Yeah, right? all the calisthenics. Yeah, yeah, being, yeah, doing stretching every single day. That's a daily mm -hmm. vitamin. Having some sort of routine, whether it's push-ups, sit-ups, yeah. calf raises, that's a daily vitamin in itself. Mm -hmm. I think shooting the ball, right? Yeah. Maybe getting depending on the level of the player, right? If you're a beginner player, maybe you only need to make 10 a day or 20 yeah. a day starting out. Just have a goal of a number that's your daily vitamin, mm -hmm. right? I make 20 shots every day. Then obviously the more advanced you get, then you're shooting maybe it's 100 threes from yeah. five spots. So you're making 500 threes a day, right? Yeah. Out of different movements. And that's your daily vitamin. You're doing that every single day, yeah, right? Exactly. And, and, and with that, I, I believe with the shooting aspect of it, once you start incorporating that going from the body the, the, the calisthenics with your body and you get into the shooting, I think it's so important to journal it, to write it down, to write, today I made 10 shots from three spots or from five spots or seven spots. Oh yeah. I struggled on the left corner today, uh, left corner jumpers. Let me focus on now, the next day I do this, let me focus on making 12 to 15 shots from that spot because I missed more than I made. So that, part of it is important too. Um, the journal, I love the journal aspect of it because it's, it's, it's like once you're able to see it, we can talk a lot and say a lot of stuff and we could, you know, get out on the court and do a lot. But once you write it down, it becomes concrete. And, and, and that's important for beginner, intermediate, advanced player, college, NBA, I don't care where you are, writing it down is important. No, definitely. I think that's one of the yeah. best parts of our program is yeah. journaling and the players that take journaling serious mm -hmm. on a daily basis, right? Whether 
they're writing down what they're learning in here. They're going home. They're writing down the workouts that they're doing at home, writing down whether their daily vitamins are done or not, yeah. um, and just measuring and everything that they're doing, right? Yeah. And being able to, man if you can measure it, you can manage it, right? Yeah. So the journal is huge, and yeah. I don't think enough players, if you're a player out there, honestly, you should have a journal where you're writing down everything we're talking about yeah. right now, right? Yeah. We've gone over four or five points already, have a ball with you, play and surround yourself with players who are, are serious and taking it are better than you and taking it serious yeah. studying the game number three daily vitamins number four now you brought up journaling that's number five right so this should all be in a journal and then figuring out how do i do all this on a daily basis right and i think having us as a mentor or role model helps certain players right but now we have this podcast so even if you don't have direct access to us in person listen and then apply this information yeah. right and so i think that would be my next thing of taking your game to the next level is having a mentor or a role model in basketball. And that can be a trainer, that can be your coach, that can be a parent, that can be a brother, that can be another player that you just have similar interests to that is um, on the same page as you as far as personality goes and you like spending time around. And when you have a mentor and you guys are on the same page about where you're currently at and where you, and where you wanna go, you just get held accountable better and you have somebody to help guide you in the right direction, almost a GPS for your success as a basketball player. Oh yeah, right? man, that's so important. I love that point, man. I, I actually had a mentor. I had a mentor when I was coming up and I th I believe my mentor during that time, I, he really saved me from, you know, myself to, to, to say, you know, being in an environment I was just, seeing the easy choices to make and being able to not make those choices and, and, and really him helped me hone in on the love of the game and, and staying focused on that. It, I mean, it, it uh, did wonders. Oh yeah, no, yeah. for sure. And I yeah. think maybe there's people out there that don't know how to find a mentor. And my thing would be, you have to search, right? Mm -hmm. You're not just going to randomly find one. It's, it's, search and find or, or right you have to go looking i mean some people get lucky and they're just either born into the right family and yeah. you have your brother or your dad or whoever it is but if you don't have a mentor don't say oh well i don't have a mentor go find one go right find. go search go yeah. talk to a thousand people if you talk to a thousand people one of them is going to be willing to be your mentor mm -hmm. right especially mm -hmm. if you approach it in the right manner and you're willing to help them yeah. along with them helping you yeah. right yeah. um and so yeah. I think everything we touched on is good points. Um, we didn't get to this one. We'll just quickly say it. Game okay. evaluations and reflections, yeah. right? Yeah. Do you think players do that enough as far as, because we're talking things they can do to take their game to the next level. So I think they do get game. I think kids do game evaluations, but I think they do it with the wrong people. Like it's easy. And I hear this, my daughter's in high school. So I, I know when players, talk and when players um, talk about their games they talk about it amongst their peers but it's more of a boastful or you know oh yeah no nope. you know, I, I know what you're saying yeah I, they're shooting the, they're biased yeah right yeah, they're biased yeah. towards themselves or, yeah. or the parent is biased towards their own kid right and so yeah. they maybe think what they're saying is true but maybe it's not true to yeah the 90 percent or everybody else from the outside looking in right yeah Exactly. One thing I want to say on that is for players that are struggling getting to where they want to go, sometimes you need to surround yourself with completely new people, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe your parents, maybe your current coach or trainer, maybe your current friends aren't getting you to the level that you want to be at. Mm -hmm. and, and you've had those friends, you've had those family members trying to help you and you're still stuck at that same place. Mm -hmm. So sometimes maybe separating yourself and trying things on your own or finding new people, right, mm -hmm. can help get you to that level that you oh, want to yeah. get to. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Even 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 if uh, I'm all for even if it's for, you know, six months, a year, you know, you're not saying get away from your family for me forever, you know, <laughs> but we're saying it's, it's times where you have to lock in for what you are passionate about. And that is so highly 
talked about amongst this generation. So I think you want to grab that energy right there and you want to be able to have that understanding like, hey, man, I might need to switch it up a bit. I might need to really get into myself, get get around some new folks, learn some new things, be, get out of my comfort zone a little bit. I think we all kind of have to go through that 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 decision making process right there. Oh yeah. Yeah. Comfort zone. Nothing good happens in the comfort zone. No, nah, it doesn't. Except it doesn't. for comfort. Yeah. Except <laughs> for that. <laughs> so yeah. Let's talk last thing and then we'll we'll kind of cover what mm -hmm. the parents can do to help. Um I think the last thing for players to really take their game to the next level is understanding that they have to take their mind to the next level. Not just their physical skills and abilities, but their mental skills and abilities. Right. Mm -hmm. And so and I don't want to leave players uh, just I don't want to leave them in the dust and just say, hey, work on your mind. What specifically do you think players can do to build up the mental side of the game and build up their mind? Mm, man, uh, that's a that's a great one. I think a lot of the points we talked about helps. It helps a lot more when you with all the points we just went over when you're able to do things like that daily and practice it daily i believe it really triggers your mental to develop at the level or at the rate that you need to develop if if if, I, if that makes sense a little bit so what I'm, what i'm saying is with the mental aspect of the game and, and we talk about fear and and, and anxiety and, and how that is prevalent in not just the game of basketball, but in life itself. I think once you understand that fear and anxiety is going is there, the more you practice your regiments, your daily regiments and your, your routines that you have, your, your morning routine, your night routine, what, what meals you have in the daytime, I think all of that helps your mental so much and it's so important to kind of be in that 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 atmosphere right there of just just from that point on right there it's really cool to kind of look back if it's 30 days even if you say okay even if you say i got 30 days for 30 days i want to do my morning routine night routine i want to make sure i eat three solid meals a day if you do that for 30 days you, talk, you tell your trainer you're gonna do something different for 30 days and come talk to your trainer or coach again after those 30 days, you're going to not only look like, but you're gonna sound like a different player. 100%. You, you're going and to I, sound I, like I get the goosebumps when you talk about that because yeah. what, what I just heard you say pretty much is the mental side and the confidence, right, comes from the preparation. Yeah. Right? Yep. And so, I would argue even, I, I agree, 30 days, right, is, is a great timeline, 30, 90, a, a year. Off, yeah. But I would argue even one day. If you go yeah. one day of doing what you know you're supposed to do, you mm -hmm. wake up and you have a list of, I need to make 500 shots, I need to stretch, I need to watch this film, or even if you're not a basketball player, just having your, your to-dos, right? I need to get my laundry done, I need to do this, yeah. X, Y, and Z. And you actually do those things, when you go to sleep at night, your confidence is boosted, even oh, if it's yeah. just a little bit. Oh, yeah. And then it compounds if you do that day after day after day. Mm -hmm. And it gets to the point where you believe in yourself and you know who you are and you have that self-confidence mm -hmm. from the preparation, yeah. right? But yeah. I will say that there is players that I've had and that we've worked with that they do those things, right? And mm -hmm. so they are working every single day. They're doing what they know they need to do. But when the game time comes, they're still feeling some sort of anxiousness or um, fear or nervousness. And so I think for those players, I think, number one, what they're doing is could be helping, right? But I think they're maybe missing something, right? Mm -hmm. Like, what are they doing specifically to know how they're gonna feel in the game because they know it's gonna come, right? But a lot of players don't necessarily work on that feeling, right? They work on, okay, I'm gonna get more shots up, I'm gonna stretch more, I'm gonna do my physical things, but they've never uh, addressed that feeling of the anxiety, right? And mm -hmm. so when that feeling comes again, it just comes again and they weren't necessarily prepared for it. So I think being able to give players that feeling more often in a workout environment of putting pressure on them, right? Yeah. Whether that's through certain drills that they, they're competing 
yeah. where if they lose, they have to run or do push-ups or whatever it is. You're put, building pressure into them. Mm -hmm. um, going to a certain number of competing within a workout mm -hmm. and just having pressure and not pressure, but just the game like atmosphere. Yeah. And, and getting them to understand that if they make a mistake in a game, it's not the biggest deal in the world because I see certain players that make a mistake in a game and from that, they look like the world just ended, yeah. right? Their, their face and their body language are horrible. And so you can just tell that they have something built up mentally where they care too much yeah. if, they're, if everything's not going their way. <laughs> you know, it's crazy. One, one thing I can say that is 100% a fact is every game you're going to make a mistake. Yep. Every game, every workout you're in, Agreed. you're going to make a mistake. So I, is a, I like to say a phrase in, in workouts, mistakes are good. N now I'm able to teach, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, we're, now this now, is what we're here for. Yeah, now I see you not trying to be a perfectionist. I see you actually being more loose with your body and your movement. I like that mistake. Now let's, let's learn now. Oh, let's yeah. Let's learn now. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And so the mental side of things is huge. Understanding that you're, you need to build your mind just as much as you build your body and your mm -hmm. skills. And, and during workouts, it starts, right? Understanding that mistakes are okay. You learn yeah. from the mistakes in the game, understanding that mistakes, the mistakes aren't going to happen, right? Yeah. You should look forward to the mistakes, mm -hmm. right? Now mm -hmm. you don't want that. You don't want to cause them purposely, but it's going to happen. So the sooner the first one comes, now you can relieve that feeling. Of, yeah tension right yeah. um so let's wrap this up with parents parent talk a little bit all right what can parents do to support their kids that want to get to the next level if i'm a parent of a little johnny or um timmy and i want to get my son and i want to help my son get better and get their game to the next level what can i do as a parent that's funny that's always the example johnny or timmy yeah. <laughs> yeah but i i think the first one is 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 the parent has to build the interest for the game of basketball so your kid loves is starting to want to play basketball for fun or they they're saying to you hey i love this, this is what i want to do i want to play in this league I, I at that point once your kid has made that commitment and said this is what they want to do, the parent kind of has to make a small commitment with themselves too and say, hey, you know, I know I want to see them show me before we spend money and before we do this for them. I want to see them actually show me that they actually, they love it. But inside of that, you also have to get out there with them, even if it's two to three times a week, you know, pass them the ball, get rebounds. You know, if something you learned or something you, you saw in a game and you feel like you're confident and comfortable teaching that as the parent you can do that you don't have to teach them everything if, if it's something that you know i don't care if it's a layup layups are are the easiest thing i, I think as a trainer that we can teach kids it's one of the first things we teach kids that don't know how to you know how to lay up. layup is how to lay up so i think that it starts there teaching them how to lay up if, if it's a kid that's more immediate and advanced I, I still think it's important for you as the parent to get out there with your kid a few times, have that love, or you don't have to have the love for the game because you're not living through your kid, but just being able to have, being able to have that mindset that two to three times a week, I see that they want it, so I'm gonna want it too with them. Yep. I'm gonna want it too with them. And so we're talking about how parents can help their kids take their game mm -hmm. to the next level, yeah. right? I think it's really simple. Sign your kids up um, with us at Fast Phenom, and we'll handle the rest. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, but really, so the big thing that I think is what you just said is I probably couldn't have said that any better. The parent has to be interested if they expect the kid to – and this is more from an early age, I think, mm -hmm. right? Like, it's really tough for your kid to grab – if you want them to gravitate towards basketball, but you're never watching basketball as the parent, and then you wonder why they're not into basketball, mm -hmm. part of it is they spend majority of their time with you and they see that you're not into basketball, right? Mm -hmm. So I think what you just said is major about being able to make sure you're involved. And then I think if the kid is going to take their game to the next level, they need a role model. And it doesn't need to be that basketball mentor that we talked about earlier. Yeah. Uh, of course they need that, but even just in their life day to day, the parents can demonstrate discipline in their own lives, mm -hmm. right? And so if you got a parent who's 
whatever, drinking alcohol and eating unhealthy and just not doing the things and, and w working towards a better life for themselves on a daily basis and not working towards personal development, it's going to be tough to have a kid that is working towards personal development mm -hmm. on a daily basis if they don't see that from the person that they look up to most, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. I think being a role model as a parent can drastically help oh, yeah. your kid in taking their game to the next level. If they're, if your kid comes to you and says, I want to take their ga my game to the next level, can you help me? The first thing you should do is, okay, how do I take myself to the next level? Because if I start taking myself to the next level personally, my kid will take their self to the next level personally, and then we're going to grow together, their game will grow, mm -hmm. and it'll be um, a much funner process when both of you guys are involved. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely wholeheartedly agree with that. Wholeheartedly agree. I, I think uh, going off of that, that the, the the last point may be go, knowing how, and and this is this is probably the toughest one with parents right here, especially speaking to the parents that kind of, and this doesn't work both ways, but speaking to the parents that have their kid in sports and they have played or have their kids in basketball and they have played basketball themselves. Um, sometimes it could be this heightened notion that I need to push, 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 push. You know, I need to work, 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 work them. And they burn out and you and then you see them have a bad game or something or, you know, was pal, high school, middle school, whatever. And, and, and then you're on them, on them, on them, on them. Um, I think is a balance between knowing when to push and when to pull back. And if you have, and you're a parent that ha has played the game before, and now your son or daughter plays the game, I think you got to do a little soul searching. I had to do it myself, being a coach and a, and a trainer, seeing my, my daughters want to play sports, and just them getting, them be developing more fear and anxiety because how hard I'm pushing. If, if that makes sense. There's a fine line there between fine pushing line. too hard and not pushing enough. And not pushing enough. So I believe it has to be that balance of, hey, making them. So, so the points we talked about earlier plays a big role when they're able to write stuff down and journal their workouts, when they are able to stretch daily, when they're able to their daily vitamins, when they're able to have a mentor. If all of these things are taking place and you as the parent, you have to understand at that point you are a guide to them. Even if you've played the game before, and you're you, even if you played pro, at that point you are a guide to them. And let put them around some other good coaches and good trainers that can kind of help echo what you say so your word won't be looked at like, oh, my parent doesn't know what they're talking about. They're pushing me too much. You know, if you have that, that trainer that's someone that's there that's good, consistent, it, it, it is a great, great thing to have. And I think the kid and the parent relationship grows from that. A hundred percent. I think yeah. being able to separate the parent from being, being your parenting role and then being able to separate that from being a coach and trainer. Cause I see parents that combine it and they're the coach and trainer and parent all in one. Yeah. And I think what you just said is great. Be able to guide them, right? Yeah. Pass them off. Be, yeah. let, let the bird fly a little mm -hmm. bit, right? Let them fly. Let them spread their wings. Yep. Yeah. Instead of necessarily trying to micromanage mm -hmm. everything, which sometimes the parent may think that they know what's best for the kid, and, and sometimes they do, right? But then other times what they think that is best might yeah. not actually be what's best. Yeah. And what I also want to touch on is what you just said of having a trainer or coach be able to echo the parent's thoughts. I think having that triangle of parent, player, and then coach or trainer mm -hmm. all on the same page and all understanding each other mm -hmm. and the parents opinion and point of view at least being heard and listened to from the player and the coach so that the coach understands why the parent is thinking like this and everybody mm -hmm. being in a constant communication yeah. of that triangle of player parent and coach slash trainer mm -hmm. it, it's just going to get the player ultimately better right it takes yeah. a village it takes a team to build a player up mm -hmm. or build anything up and so by everybody being on the same page, the boat is rowing in the correct direction. Yeah. If the parent wants the player to be a three-point shooter, but the player wants to be somebody that wants to drive to the basket and finish, and the coach is just expecting him to play defense or rebounding, oh, now you got 
people sitting on all sides of the boat rowing in different directions, you're just going to be stuck in the middle of the ocean, right? We want to get everybody on the same page and get everybody rowing in the direction that we want to go, and ultimately we'll get there faster, Yeah. right? Yeah. So I, I think uh, we obviously went a little bit over time. I know we originally said 30 minutes. I think this was a little closer to an hour, but, hey, there was a lot of really good information, in my opinion. I think this was a yeah, really was. solid episode. Yeah, um, yeah. Did you have fun? Yeah, I did. I did. Sweet. I came here with the intentions to have fun, so, yeah, it definitely was. Cool. Yeah. And I know we're having a little bit of technical difficulties right now with the buzz. I don't know if hopefully other people can't hear that. Um, but anyways, we're going to wrap this up. It was a great episode three. Thank you for those who listened all the way through. Again, this was one of our longer episodes, but there was a lot of good information. So hopefully you took what we talked about, about having a journal and wrote some of these things down, whether you're the parent or the player. I think it's valuable to have a journal um, and then have a plan, execute and understand how you're taking your game to the next level. Myself, Tyler Matthews and my man, Earl Simmons Jr., we thank you guys for listening to this episode. If there's anything we can do to help in any way ever on anything that we just talked about on this episode, please reach out to us and let us know. Earl, do you have any final words for those who listen to today's podcast? Oh, man, thank you for tuning in, guys. I hope this helps out a lot. I don't care what level you're at. I just hope this helps you out a lot. Thank you for tuning in. Great. Until the next episode, thanks for watching.